Come on, take a few moments and just ask the Lord to seal this worship that has already been offered, that we've joined in this first worship of the year, a time when we have come together saying, thank you, God, for making a way. Thank you for bringing us and keeping us. Thank you for being for us in this past year, that which we could not be for ourselves. And Lord, as we now come into this new year, we come into this year with a sense, God, of your faithfulness, but also the struggle that has been. And so, God, we come to you with our hands and our hearts open. Lift your hands right where you are in your home, in your living room, in your bedroom, walking the lake, in the park with your family, or even if you are there with friends, roommates, or even by yourself. Just lift those hands to God. And just invite God right now to keep reminding you that there is a way that God has made, a way that God has made, a path that God has cut through the hardships and the difficulties and the unforeseen struggles that 2020 brought. And that same God is declaring to you today that I will continue to make a way as we move into this new year. God, we invite you to keep making a way out of no way. Keep reminding us, God, that you are the bridge over troubled waters. Keep giving to us that which we need, Lord, for life and hope and strength. Give it to us, God. And even, Lord, even in this moment, God, we continue to lift up those who are incarcerated today. We continue to lift up those who find themselves in cages and in cells away from their families and their parents and their loved ones, the children that are still at the borders, those who find themselves under the onslaught of white supremacists, Lord God, and and, and extremists, Lord God. We lift up Nashville, Lord, and the, the terrible terror attack that happened there last week. We lift up, Lord God, the raging COVID that is in the land. We lift up, Lord God, the pestilence and the trouble, Lord God, that is being caused at the national political level that is seeping down even into our cities all across the country. We lift up the epidemic of gun violence, Lord God, the shootings and the homicides and the injuries, Lord God, the rise of suicides, Lord God. We lift up, Lord, the assaults and the abuse, Lord God, in intimate partner relationships. We lift up all of these things, Lord God, the depression and, Lord God, the anxiety that this season is causing. We lift it up to you, knowing, God, that you can make a way out of no way and that you are a faithful God. Bless us, Lord, as a church, as a people, and as a congregation. Lord, as we look into the word that you have given to us for today, Lord, I pray that you will come alive in the text and come alive in the preaching and the teaching, Lord God, that will come before us. And we'll say thank you in all of these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, people of the way. Happy New Year to you. What a great blessing it is for us to be uh, here experiencing one more year, another year of life, another year of living, another year of faithfulness. And so uh, from our house to your house, from certainly the leadership of our church to you, Happy New Year. Just take a moment in the chat and say Happy New Year to somebody. You may see a name. You may see a uh, 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 person that you you haven't had a chance to just say happy new year to yet take a moment in the chat and just let them know that you love them and you're super excited to be able to spend this time together on this the first sunday of the year now obviously uh every time we come around to a new year uh we always have so much expectation many of us have new year's resolutions and things that we are hoping to see realized in this new year uh i hope that as we move into this new year we appreciate that just because uh, 2020 is over, it doesn't mean uh, that all the problems of 2020 uh, have left us. Amen. 2021 is still a time where we have to contend uh, with uh, the obvious challenges of our health and our, our mind and, and certainly the, the, the issue of COVID. We are still a, a virtual church in our meeting and fellowship, but we are certainly uh, the church, the arms and the legs of God in the world. And so we invite you to continue to see yourself 
as a part of our community and continue to imagine that this new year gives us the opportunity to begin to look with some expectation for a season where we as our staff have been putting together some concepts and ideas, a time where we can reclaim our community and recover the sense of, of belongingness. We can rebuild and rebound uh, from the kinds of challenges that have uh, in very many cases defined our last 12 months. And certainly we can reimagine uh, a future that is needed for our new reality post-COVID. Um, COVID-19, COVID-44, and we still gonna have to deal with COVID-16-19, uh, right? And so we have quite a bit of work that we have to do, but I do believe that the church of God in the world, the body of Christ, uh, we have an opportunity to, as the text will tell us today, rise and shine and allow the faithfulness of God to be at work among us. Turn with me now then into your Bibles to Isaiah chapter number 60. We are super grateful again for all of you who uh, have made <clears throat> the, the ministry of the way functional in this season and in this time. I must give uh, some acknowledgement to our pastoral uh, executive staff team. Um, this is a team of folks that uh, through much prayer and, 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 and thought, um, I have convened to help uh, uh, guide the day-to-day -day, uh, ministry of our church. And uh, I am super blessed and super excited um, to have them here with us. Uh, certainly, uh, Pastor Tanisha uh, is our campus pastor, which means that she is the one who uh, provides our primary leadership and visioning for uh, the functionality of uh, the way Berkeley, knowing that we have uh, uh, places and spaces across not just the state, but all across the country where members of the way gather. But we do know that there is a, a powerful uh, home base here, and Pastor Tanisha is uh, uh, powerfully serving that role. Um, and, and I just want you to appreciate Pastor Tanisha. She provides so much uh, important support. Uh, she helps think with me a little bit and execute the kind of uh, plans and, 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 and heart that I feel God is uh, pulling uh, pulling. Um, out of me and us in this season, um, and, and uh, we know that she drinks from the fountain of youth, praise God, and so she don't age, she just, I don't know, she just, she just lives, <laughs> praise God, so come on, let's thank God for Pastor Tanisha, uh, we thank God for Pastor Donna, uh, who is uh, our Director of Spiritual uh, Development and Coaching, and uh, she is providing all kinds of uh, leadership and support to us from a distance. She is still in North Carolina. She has not relocated back to the Bay Area. But since we are in a season of virtual church and living and ministry, uh, Pastor Don is helping us to continue to think through our expansion and our coaching and our leadership development. And so in the chat, just thank God for Pastor Donna. Please thank God for Pastor Donna and the great ministry and support that she provides to us. Uh, we are so grateful for a powerful, powerful team of ministers and servants who have uh, just filled in amicably, amicably and powerfully uh, as uh, our churches continue to endure this virtual season. I want to lift up with great gratitude, uh, uh, Minister Mike Carpenter, who has uh, in many respects kept our virtual church thriving and alive. And uh, he has uh, uh, been leading our, our efforts to stay uh, relevant and, and increase our production capacity here at The Way. And so uh, just appreciate Minister Mike. Uh, appreciate Minister Lauren, everybody. Amen. We are so blessed to have such uh, gifted um, a psalmist, a, a worship leader, an artist um, who brings uh, her great gifts to the way uh, on a regular basis, week to week. Uh, it is uh, quite a comforting thing to have Minister Lauren uh, blessing us and leading us in worship, along with the rest of the music ministry. Uh, amen, Brother LJ, Brother Calvin, uh, and our singers who are, uh, are providing amazing background uh, vocals to give us a little bit of a wraparound effort. So come on, let's appreciate Minister Lauren. Uh, Minister Wayne, I call him my Minister of Justice, praise God. And uh, he is uh, 
uh, stepping into his own as a preacher, and I think we've been blessed by his messages and the ways in which he leads, but he is also uh, on the pavement in the streets of Oakland, Richmond, the region and the Bay Area, helping us uh, to ensure that we are doing the great work of justice and peacemaking um, in this city and in this region, um, helping to lead the, the Ministry of Justice along uh, with uh, the, the leadership of Sister Florence and, and so many others. So thank God for Minister Wayne, Sister Florence, all those folks. And uh, certainly, um, not last but not least, uh, our rising minister, praise God, in seminary, Minister Adrian Philpart. She is our director of uh, ministries and and helping us uh, 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 to to um, e e engage and execute all of our executive ministry uh, work. She is providing so much organizational management and development and support for us here at the Way. If you get those wonderful newsletters every week, uh, that is because of Minister Adrian and and uh, all of the gifts that she brings to keep us on track. Um, we're just so grateful. And so I thought before I preached uh, that I would just give you a highlight of what's happening behind the scenes. Why is that important? Well, because uh, as we move into this new year, um, we are going to need to open up <clears throat> the floodgates of, of, of volunteers and more of you to come and help us uh, scale and execute the kind of ministry that is required in this season. It is indeed the case, child of God, that this pandemic has reminded us that our impact as a church is only as strong as our connection and the ability of we, the people of the way, to stay in relationship with one another. And relationship is more than just worshiping on a Sunday morning together. Relationship is about us being able uh, to walk and do life together. Walk and do life together. And while that walking and life uh, together work is happening mostly through our uh, virtual spaces, it does give us an opportunity to have some important spaces uh, to carve out on a day-to-day, -day, week to week, particularly as we head into the consecration. So I'm inviting you to take advantage of these uh, opportunities that will arise over the weeks and months to come as we continue to reclaim our community and rebuild our community and recover our community, reimagine our community, uh, rebound from the, the, the unexpected issues that came in 2020, uh, reminding ourselves that 2021 is a new time and a new season. So Isaiah chapter number 60, let's turn to the biblical text and see what the scriptures have to say to us today. Uh, this is the book of Isaiah. This is our lectionary passage, and I'm super excited for us to get the opportunity to be able to come to this particular passage and hear what the Lord has to say to us on this morning. Uh, this particular chapter uh, is one of the uh, what they call a Deutero, uh, uh chapter. The last uh, few chapters, they call it the uh, the, the Triton Isaiah, which means that there are three parts to Isaiah, one that they believe has been written by uh, the Isaiah prophet himself, or that covers the actual prophetic ministry that Isaiah offered. There's another uh, of, a part of the book of Isaiah that is thought to have been uh, a deutero, meaning uh, many particular named prophets out of the school that Isaiah helped to launch that continue to capture and write and proclaim the word of the Lord. And then there is what is known as the last several chapters of Isaiah that are thought to have been uh, written, or dare I say, uh, prophetic ministry delivered from anonymous, everyday people in the nation of Israel who are attempting to declare to those who would listen, this is what God is saying to us as we come out of the season of exile. That is by itself such an important truth to proclaim to us that there is a role for the everyday, ordinary, quote-unquote, follower of God to have anonymity while you engage in the prophetic function of God's call in your life. That you don't necessarily need a title in order to be a powerful tool in the hand of God. Taking 
this truth uh, even more broadly. There is this universality as the Lucan gospel, the gospel written in Luke and, and made uh, complete with the Acts of the Apostles, a universality of, 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 of possibility for the follower of Jesus who has been filled with the power of God's Spirit. That to follow Jesus, fueled by the power of God's Spirit, qualifies you for the possibility of ministry that is at its root prophetic. Ministry that is at its root um, moving through the lives and the material conditions of people and at one time, all at one time, if you will, recovering and rebuilding and reclaiming and reimagining and rebounding that you, follower of Jesus, have access to the same power that moves through the prophets, that moves through the preachers, that moves through the priests, that moves through the oracles of God. You ought to just say that to yourself, amen, that I, I got access to this power, that I don't need a title in order to be an instrument of the living God. And there is no better opportunity or season than the one we are in today, where all of the prophets, all of the people, all of the instruments of God are needed in this season of great challenge and transition. We're going to head to the biblical text in Isaiah chapter number 60. Isaiah chapter number 60, and uh, the scripture is powerful in its declaration. The prophets are helping us to uh, end this lectionary Sunday on the first Sunday of the year, a Sunday that we call Epiphany Sunday, to hear these words and the words of scripture, Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1, simply say this, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples, but the Lord will rise upon you. Oh my goodness, and the glory of the Lord will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Verse number four says, lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They are coming to you. Talking about these nations, talking about these peoples. Your sons shall come from far away and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Come on, let us just say thanks be to God. Amen. Say that. Thanks be to God. So for the next few moments, we're just going to dive into this passage for the first sermon of 2021 by declaring that it is our time to rise and shine, that indeed there are levels to this. Just put that in the chat. There are levels to this. Yes, kind of kind of like this, this service today. There's levels to this. Amen. Let's just pray and ask God to bless us. Lord, we want to say thank you. Thank you for the word of God that has been read for us, the people of God. Lord, even in this moment, we invite you to hide this word in our heart so we will not sin against you and allow the preaching and teaching of your word to be made easy and to be heard through that part of us that is longing for a word from you. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus, the Christ we pray. Come on, let the people of the way just say amen. Yes, there are levels to this. There are levels to this. Now, one of the, the more mindless uh, but needed distractions that I've engaged in uh, as we have uh, had this extended time of the pandemic sheltering in place and feeling uh, isolated and homebound, uh, I've, I've picked back up the, 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 the distraction, if you will, of video games. 
I, 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 I was growing uh, up in a household that did not fully appreciate my video game prowess, praise God. My father was not a, a big fan of the video games, and so, uh, you know, while uh, I enjoyed them so greatly, there were moments of friction at times when the video games uh, were, were, were uh, taking up too much space in my mind. So I haven't played video games uh, literally since UC Davis when, uh, you know, I had to learn the hard way. I, I played too much games and hung out too much and ended up having to come back home and rethink my life, praise God. But, but nevertheless, my therapist encouraged me to do some things uh, that were not just work-related because part of what has happened to many of us now that we are working from home is we have lost the, the, the line between work and home and breaks and on and off. And if you are someone like me who worked too much uh, already, that was becoming an even added uh, blurring of the line, if you will. And so uh, my therapist encouraged me to, to, to find some, something I could do that would uh, continue to stimulate my mind, but it would be mindless stimulation. Mm -hmm. It would be something that I could do, you know, uh, at the end of the day that would not uh, require me to try to defeat white supremacy or defeat uh, uh, <laughs> Donald Trump or, or police brutality, something that was just a little light. And so I, I, I went and bought me a PlayStation 4. And, and, uh, and, and, and I, 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 for the last six months, uh, in between all the tasks I've had to balance, I spend about an hour each day trying to beat various uh, virtual villains in the Spider-Man games, in the Star Wars games, and, 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 and it's been exhilarating, praise God. It's been, it's, been, it's been great finding these clues and defeating little, these monsters and, and solving problems and working through the storytelling that happens in these games. Uh, it's been great being able to, to, to just, just not have to think about some, some big problems because I'm, I'm totally enthralled with these imaginary ones. I'm going somewhere with this, amen. One of the greatest gifts of playing video games has reminded me of this eternal principle. That in order to gain mastery over a thing, you must be okay with losing. I mean, losing a lot. Uh, I have been beaten by the AI computer in the game so many times. I've been beaten by... Uh, real life virtual opponents sitting on the other side of of the internet uh, space. I, I I've been uh, arm wrestling, if you will, with with these opponents who are probably wondering who is this this Holy Ghost filled high capacity gamer who speaks in tongues and casts out devils uh, uh, when the Empire shows up. Uh, on the screen, you know, it, it's 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 been a, a a fascinating journey, but it's also been humbling to lose, and I'm talking about losing almost hours at a time over the course of a week, to be stuck at a certain level, a certain villain, a certain obstacle, because I have not yet mastered the skill set or unlocked the adequate power to overwhelm my enemy. And it's been fascinating as I've gotten into the whole gaming thing that, you know, I've introduced it to my daughters and, and uh, they don't like to play the nice, you know, games that are, you know, I don't know, uh, Super Mario Brothers and Miss Pac-Man. No, they like Fortnite. My daughters seem to love shooting folk. Uh, all up and down, I mean, head shots and body shots, and, and I'm so squeamish looking at it, I said, I, I, can't, I can't deal with all of that. And so in an effort to introduce my daughters to a, a different kind of gaming experience, I, I invited little Nyla, little baby Nyla, uh, if she wanted to learn the Spider-Man Miles Monroe game, Miles Morales game, I'm sorry. And, and, and as she got into the game, she began to, to, I think, appreciate it, and she began to enjoy it. But, but it became a little annoying because uh, as she ran into a villain she could not beat or a challenge she could not overcome, 
She will yell for me out of my real-time work life to come and help her defeat a villain that she could not defeat on her own. And I tried to explain, and I said, now listen, uh, the, 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 the whole purpose of playing a game is so you can learn how to win on your own. That there are levels to this. Now, I love that. You, 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 got, to, you got to stay plugged in. You got to stay engaged. You cannot uh, just call for me to come and, 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 and give you the secrets before you learn them on your own. Now, I wasn't trying to hear that. Not as like, Daddy, I need you to, I need you to beat this because I just want to get back to, to the swing in and I want to get back to using my powers and I can't do it because I've been stuck at this level for too long. And so, you know, because I need to get back to the real world, I would just sometimes uh, do that and I, I beat it for her, I give her a clue, and then I go back into my real life work situations. And, and I, I feel compelled to use this framing this morning for us as a church, as a community, as a people, and certainly for you as a family, as, as a person, if you will, that there are levels to this world, this life, this season that we are navigating. Levels of mastering certain skill sets, levels of commitment, levels of healing, levels of recovering and reimagining, reclaiming, Levels that are being set before us. And for all the hell that we've had to endure in the past year or so, if you are listening to this message, this is worth celebrating that we are still here. You ought to just come on, put that in the chat and just say, oh, I want to say thank you, Lord, that I'm still here. I'm, I'm still here. I, I, I am still here hanging on, even if nothing but for a thread. A, a new year has risen on us, but it is worth acknowledging that old enemies from 2020 still remain. On this Sunday, uh, in the life of the church, it is known as Epiphany Sunday. This Sunday, the first Sunday in the year 2021, we are invited to lean into the newness of this year, the possibility of a future that is not yet written. And I wonder what kind of epiphany, what kind of revelation, what kind of ideas have you received from 2020? What kind of lessons have you learned that are, are allowing you to draw some hope and some some skill and 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 some resources for the year 2021 that is before us what level of mastery have we demonstrated which sets us up well for this year and and what enemies and adversaries remain from last year which require another level of commitment in order to defeat I must be honest with you that uh, even as we have hit 2021, it is not as if the, our lives are like Cinderella when the strike, the clock struck 12, that everything just reset back to a time before COVID, before Trump, before the tragedy that had happened in your life. No, uh, we still have COVID with us. It has not left. And, and, and some of the, the, the reports are telling us that there's a new strain of COVID that has risen. That is sometimes more contagious than the COVID-19 uh, strain and that this new strain uh, has a uh, much more contagious impact with children uh, ages uh, zero to 16 than the original strain of COVID-19 and that this new strain does not have as much contagious impact with our seniors that literally we've had a season where our seniors have been the most vulnerable and now it appears a new strain is rising up where now our children may have extended impact and vulnerability. We still have to contend with the loss and the grief of 2020. The lingering impact of COVID-19 and all of its, its deleterious collateral damage to our minds and our bodies, those who have 
had COVID, those who have lost loved ones to COVID, those who are on the front line still with exhaustion trying to serve a nation that is, in many respects, caught in the COVID vortex. We cannot ignore the seditious acts of too many Republican lawmakers in Washington, D.C., and their, their cultists like Trump followers across the country who are right before our eyes attempting to dismantle the fragile functionality of democratic governance, trying to, to call elections that have all, always been at their root. Uh, exclusionary to non-white men. Uh, the, these elections already have voter suppression tactics built into it. And we uh, who have always had to fight in order to vote, if you are a woman, if you are black, if you are an undocumented person, if you don't fit the, the kind of profile of being white and male and Christian in this country, you've always had to figure out ways to, to navigate to the polls to vote. And now that we have figured out a way to vote at record numbers, they're trying to call the election illegitimate and block the, the, the transition of government which will impact all of our lives. These proverbial villains, if you will, are here among us. We cannot ignore that our children are getting ready to return to school tomorrow or this week still in a virtual learning space while families are struggling. Many of us to have basic food and health and, 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 and mental support, uh, emotional support extended to ourselves and our loved ones. All of this is a lingering effect of 2020. And yet on this morning, I want you to know that there are a, 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 a series of admonitions from the prophet that offer a different invitation to you and I. For there are some who are using and responding to this despondent moment uh, with a fall into despair or hurling themselves into a religious or agnostic abyss of escapism. Uh, places like, uh, 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 what, what's this new thing? Clubhouse, praise God. Folk on Clubhouse talking all night long about things they, they, they dreaming up. Folks are, are, are using tools to further create all kinds of fascinating escapism. And yet I want you to know, child of God, that there is an opportunity that the prophet gives to you and I, and we are invited to rise up and shine. I wonder if you can take a Holy Ghost moment or two just to pause and to close your eyes and, and just let these words enflesh themselves in your consciousness and in your life right now that you are being invited by God to rise and shine. Pat yourself on the chest real quick and tell yourself, I got to rise up and I got to shine. I got to rise up and I got to shine. Shout out the name of somebody in the chat, uh, a virtual saint, if you will, and tell them, oh, I need you to rise and shine. Pastor Tanisha, I need you to rise and shine. Come on, just say a quick name in the chat. Tell them, I need you to rise and shine. That in spite of all the struggles of 2020, the lingering challenges which have carried over into 21, the prophet reminds us that the glory of the Lord is still upon us. That the glory of the Lord is literally rising among us, rising within us, rising around us. Now, I've preached this message so many times before throughout the years. It's my 15th or 16th consecutive year preaching through the lectionary. And so on the first Sunday of the year, this verse usually comes up as one of the options. And, and every year it brings its own kind of opportunities to start anew. But I don't feel like the message we need is one to start anew. I think we need a message that reminds us of our sacred responsibility being laid upon us as we, the people of God, are navigating still through these very tough and difficult spaces. That you and I, the people of God in general, and the church of Jesus Christ in particular, must discern the times that we are in. 
And we must be clear about the lethality of the risk before us. Without losing sight of the call, we still have to be the church in a world where isolation is being forced upon us as a mechanism of survival. Be clear, child of God, that isolation is not just about you being physically alone. Because for many of us, that in and of itself is a hellish challenge we have had to navigate. The lack of human touch, the lack of physical proximity, the inability to hug or be hugged, to love or be loved, if you will. That in and of itself is one challenge. But how many of you know that there is also another form of isolation that is about the fracturing happening in our society? The fragmentation of our social compass, the disunity and divisions that are cropping up in our families and relationships that keep us separated from one another. This kind of isolation, if you will, is most expressed just through the mundane task of of wearing a mask that so many still seem to take as a, a imposition on their personal freedoms. But I want you to know that they are demonstrating those who refuse to wear masks, those who refuse to shelter in place, those who refuse to follow the guidance of the science, if you will. They are literally demonstrating an existential loneliness and isolation that is at its root not just reckless, but uh, endemic of the kind of loneliness our society has produced without and end. The prophet declares and describes them, if you will, in the text as being in, if I would bring the metaphor back from the Get Out movie, in a sunken place. For it says that they have been wrapped in darkness, and I substitute the word darkness for gloom. They've been trapped in a place where literally there is no epiphany, there is no revelation, there is no light. They have given up on the the prospect of community outside of their own difference. They have attempted to shrink the world to the, the limits of their own understanding. And I want you to know that when you become so filled with fear or arrogance, when we refuse to believe that God moves outside the boundaries of our limited understanding, did not the scriptures declare that my ways are not your ways, that my thoughts are not your thoughts? Did not God say that just as, as high as the heavens is, lo, my, my ways and my truths are often beyond your ability to ascertain or understand? And yet we get uh, uh, glimpses and and reminders of, 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 of markers along the way to ensure we stay on the right path. Child of God, the rising of the glory of the Lord is one of those such markers. And if we as the church can step into the light, if we can rise and if we can shine, in this moment, if we can stay committed to the struggle of living our lives while we make room for the nations, Lord, help me today. Oh, if we can live our lives while we make room for the differences and the, the families and the loved ones, the strangers, the injured and the curious. If we can live our lives in such a way that allows us to reclaim the communities that God says in the text will be coming our way. Your life, my life, our lives will take on a transcendent meaning. It will take on a utility, a a purpose that no virus can extinguish. It will take on a a power and a purpose that no trouble or no disappointment or struggle could evacuate. And I want you to know, child of God, that this this is what 2021 is offering you and I, an opportunity to imagine that God would want to do much more with us than the realities of suffering that seem to surround us. 
that God is seeking to call you into a greater consciousness of how the glory of the Lord, the light of the gospel of God's good news is rising among us and it's shining. Ooh, you ought to just tell yourself that. I, 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 I need to make sure that 2021 becomes a year where I can see and I can declare and I can be conscious of the glory of the light of God shining in my marriage, shining in my family, shining in my vocation, shining in my, my health, shining in my neighborhood, even while the gloom seems to engulf those around me, God has placed me in this place, in this season, on this job, in this academy, in this family, so the glory of the light of the Lord can shine. Lord, I, I need somebody to just understand that God is trying to shine through you right through here. And if I could recycle my video game analogy, if you will, uh, I want you to know that the ability to rise and shine and to step into the light and most importantly to reflect the glory of God so you can demonstrate it. It could shine reflectively into those folks in the sunken places of doom and isolation. You must have some mastery of certain spiritual and emotional disciplines. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. You, you must have the ability to master a few things. You must have the ability to achieve competence of a few things. And, and, and for some of us, you know, uh, it, it may feel a bit intimidating. Uh, you may feel like, Nyla, I'm tired of losing on this level. But child of God, I want you to know that just like Nyla had her father, her daddy, who was available even in the busyness of his life. To come in from time to time and help her get through the part that she could not win. You got some help in your life. Lord have mercy. You got some help. In, uh, uh, Jesus said it like this, that when I go back to, to my father in heaven, I want you to know I'm going to leave with you a comforter. Oh, the Holy Spirit will be here and the Holy Spirit will be here to lead you and guide you into all truth. Somebody ought to say the Holy Spirit is my cheat code. Lord, I don't know. That just came to me right now. Amen. The Holy Spirit is my cheat code. When I can get through this level, I can pull on the power of the Holy Spirit. When I can't get through this enemy, I can pull on the power of the Holy Ghost. When I get caught in a cycle of losing, I don't have to stay in the losing circle because even when I lose somehow, some way, God's power gives me the ability to win. Oh, somebody shout, I got the cheat code. I got a cheat code and that cheat code is what's Helping me get my mastery of this level. Yes, 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 yes. Now, 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 let me park here for a moment because for some of us, many folks think that mastery translates to perfection. But I want you to know that you do not have to be perfect in order to be a master of these particular competencies. You just have to become more skilled and, and more impactful and more persuasive than your adversary or the unconvinced and deceived among you. Yes, uh, you, you must understand mastery is not perfection. Too often our Western notions of control and the moralizing that seems to be attached to everything that we do. It creates dissonance where there should be synergy. When you look at the most skilled athletes, when you look at the most talented and celebrated artists or entertainers or leaders, perfection is not their distinguishing characteristic. No, they, 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 they are not perfect. Uh, Steph Curry is known as the greatest shooter in history, but he does not make every shot. Barry Bonds was known as one of the best baseball players of all time, but he did not bat at a 1,000. You have 
uh, folk who were some of the greatest athletes, Joe Montana, uh, Jerry Rice. Sorry, y'all. I'm just pulling from the folk I like. <laughs> uh huh. Uh, Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal, Magic Johnson. Uh huh. If, if if I name Joe your favorite person yet, then you can do it when you get a chance to preach. Amen. Mm hmm. But 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 I'm talking about all of these folk. They were not perfect in their particular field, but they developed a certain kind of competence which set them apart from their contemporaries in their circle of influence. And I want you to know that uh, in a society that is, is in need of, of a certain kind of competency around the mastery of your giftedness and your skill set, you and I must appreciate mastery is not perfection. You need not be perfect in order for you to master what God has placed in your hand. Now, clearly it's worth saying in a society structured by race and class and gender and, and, and religion, human sexuality, nation of origin, other social categories, we cannot ignore the inherent privileges and disadvantages which collude to keep so many of us from achieving in our social context our most highest passions. There are barriers and those barriers are real. But just like we cannot confuse mastery with perfection, you and I must not confuse positionality with functionality. Uh, you and I must realize, just like uh, one of the greatest gifts of the black church have brought to us in the Jim Crow era of the 1800s and 1900s, uh, that, that there was a space that the church, the black church, made for those who were deemed as subhuman in the world. They could always show up to the house of God. And, and even though society saw them as less than human, they could come into a space and a place where they would be treated and reminded that they were fully human in God's house. Uh, and I want you to know, child of God, that's what 2021 must become for many of us. We must make a commitment that you will be a space and a place where folks' lives can be reminded and reclaimed as fully human and created in the image of God. Oh, the, the early church folk in, in those times, they may have cleaned houses during the week, but then they would come to the house of God and be a prayer warrior who could literally move heaven. They may be a sanitation worker during the week uh, that was despised and, 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 and underpaid and erased from social celebration. But then they will show up on a Sunday and be the administrator for the house of God on the earth. Illiterate men and women became oracles of God by, by being imbued with power. Talk about that cheat code again. That allowed them, even though they could not read what was said, the Spirit of God was, was channeling through them a much-needed word for that time and for that people. You had unskilled youth who did not go to art schools and did not go to music schools and did not go to the academies, but they were channeling the creativity and brilliance of their ancestors and the arts and the culture to produce music and food and technology and influence that will circle the globe long before they even got there. They did not have positions. They did not have titles but their passions and their gifts functioned in ways that were consequential because they knew where their help came from. They mastered or were competent in being able to connect to the true and the living God, not the God of their oppression, not the God of their oppressors, but the one true living God, they were able to connect to that power even in the midst of all of their troubles. I'm going to preach the rest of this next week. It'll be levels to this part two. But one of the greatest challenges in 2021, I believe, will be the full uncoupling of our faith from that of white Christian nationalism. 
which has always coexisted in some forms at times, even embedding itself in and among those who are striving to practice faithful Christianity. Here at the way we call this dechurchification. Letting go of some of these ways of doing church, which in turn limit or, or could expand how faithful we can be as the true church. I want you to know that the more fundamentalists, the more exclusive your church, our church is, any church is, the smaller our circle of concern for the masses of people God has said in this text will be drawn to us. Drawn to the light in you. If you're too fundamentalist in your orientation of God's love, God will bring people into your life that you will not have the ability to reflect God's glory to. So our task in 2021 is to reclaim our communities that are literally running to us. It is to Eschew the hierarchies that are based off the spectrum of whiteness that dominate our theology. It is to reject those kinds of formations that disciple people into racism and self-hatred. Disciple people away from those hierarchies that cause them to doubt the imago dei within them. We must raise up a church and a follower of Jesus who will not continue to repel those being drawn to the glory that is rising among us. And child of God, there is glory rising among us. There are levels of mastery that are being placed before us. My prayer to us all is that God may give us the ability to see it and to ascertain its presence, to be able to identify it, to name it, and even to lean into it. Take a moment, if you will, to just say to yourself, maybe to those who are with you, that this year will be a year for us to reclaim community. This year will be a year for us to recover the ponds of friendship and relationships that for years past have been fragmented and broken. This year will be a year to reimagine a few ways of being that perhaps have unfortunately been limited because of the narrowness of the ways in which I've been taught to be human. This season will allow me to move more powerfully into the cheat code that is the Holy Spirit. Because the more levels I get to, they used to say the more devils you will encounter. But guess what? The more devils you encounter, that means that you are getting more power of God's Spirit to defeat every enemy. This consecration we're going through is an opportunity for you and I to consecrate for today the struggles we will face tomorrow. To consecrate today in ways that give us the strength and the power we need for the adversaries we will face tomorrow. So take a moment and say, God, help me to rise and shine. Help me to, to, to reflect your glory. Help me, God to take this moment and season more seriously. Not as a time to just say I'm going to be a historic in how I begin this year. I'm going to uncouple myself from my immediate or long-term history or past, but no, God, I'm going to walk boldly with your power and continue to master that which is needed to grasp victory and power and no defeat in your will. God, I pray for the persons who are here today, Lord, who do not yet know 
you as their deliverer, as their sustainer, as their strength. Life has been so overwhelming for them that they have not seen you as concrete as the trouble they face. They are unaware, oh God, of your functionality, your presence in their lives. They have chalked it up to chance and to 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 to, to fate and 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 to, to to whims. But God, I know that you are real. Hallelujah. We know that you are real. We feel you in our hands. We feel you in our feet. You're all around us and the glory of your presence is rising among us. While we weep, they, your glory rises. While we mourn, your glory rises. While we ask questions, while we struggle, your glory rises. I pray, God, that your glory would rise among those who have not yet known you. Lord, be real to them. Bring strength to them. Bring power and purpose to them. In the name of Jesus. I pray, God, for every family, every Lord God, person who is coming into this new year, God, and, and they are filled with resi residue, residual pain and struggle, and, and their instinct is to just ignore it and to try to start a fresh start without dealing with what lingers and remains. I pray, God, that you will give us a more enlightened approach, a more informed approach. We need not forget, Lord, erase or be thrown into an abyss of agnosticism or religious escapism in order to overcome these devils that still persist. But God, all we must do is lean into your glory, the light, the power, and the strength of your spirit. May your spirit rise among them. May your strength rise among them. May your power rise among them. In Jesus' name.